Oh, the race to November is on and things are getting more interesting by the day now, aren't they? Trump goes absolutely off yesterday. I'm going to show you what happened, what triggered that response. And then we get the whole plan. From the most unexpected source, they out Kamala and Biden. It was absolutely amazing. We're going to read that and lawyer up. The FBI is coming. I couldn't believe it when I saw the update. Actually, you know, shouldn't be surprised anymore in this news cycle. Anything is possible. And that's the stories we'll have for you in just one minute. Right, my friends, welcome back to the broadcast. Can't thank you enough for being here. Can't ever tell you how much we appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed to your channel or you think you're subscribed, double check. Make sure your bell is checked to all so you may or may not be alerted to all our upcoming broadcasts. Isn't it scary? We got to say that. But this, again, is the race to or against censorship that we're in the middle of right now. To fight that, however, we created more news for you at RestrictedRepublic.com, our own platform. No sponsors, no advertisers, no commercials, no interruptions, just cold, hard facts referenced and researched. We need you there. That's your best way to support us, Lisa Haven and myself, to make sure we can continue to bring you the news no matter what roadblocks they will throw in the way. And there will be many because this story today leads right into that. Use discount code INDEPENDENCE at RestrictedRepublic.com. That gets you $4 a month for, oh, that's right, two years plus 14 days for free. You can cancel anytime. That's how confident we are. You will go nowhere else for your news to matters. But now let's kick right back into this broadcast. Because Donald J. Trump has a whole lot to say now, doesn't he? Rightfully so. We'll start with the debate. We're not going to end with it. I promise you that. This debate that was scheduled in Philadelphia for September 10th. Oh, there's been a lot of buzz around it, hasn't there? Yesterday, story coming out that there's a new squabble going on. That's the best that Kamala seems to be able to do is squabble. And what was it about? Well, muted microphones, a seat, and a script. Oh, not a script. I'm sorry. Let me read from the article. This, this, broad, this was published on AP. The Harris campaign now wants microphones to be live at all times. Trump says, I don't have a problem with that. Of course, they're going to say his handlers don't want the microphone on because they don't think their candidate could act presidential for 90 minutes on his own. He is never acted as a traditional presidential candidate. So why should we change anything now? And Trump seems absolutely fine with it, but there's more. So now wants microphones to be live at all times. According to Harris spokesman Brian Fallon, who issued a statement needling Trump. Trump spokesman Jason Miller retorted that the Republican nominee had accepted the ABC debate under the exact same terms as the CNN debate. But of course, the last minute that's going to change. He alleges that Harris representatives sought a seated debate. It's got to look more casual. If you notice when she thinks she's at her best, she's sitting down. Don't know why you can't stand up and debate. She could have notes and an opening statement. Now that notes section should be of special concern. Remembering this is on ABC. As Donald Trump tweeted this on Truth Social. I watched ABC News, fake news this morning. Both lightweight reporter Jonathan Carl's ridiculous and biased interview of Tom Cotton. And it was. But he goes on. I ask, why would I do the debate against Kamala Harris on that network? I don't know if I would under those rules. All it's going to be is staged, scripted. There's the danger... The panelist Donna Brazil could give the questions like she did to Hillary Clinton. Could she give them to Kamala? Maybe that's notes that they want Kamala to have. Maybe she could be prepared. She's already said, allegedly, according to her handlers, she doesn't like public speaking. What a nice way to get around everything. I wonder how many times we'll hear the cackling laugh. It drives me insane. But let's get to sincerity first. Hope you saw this yesterday. I'm going to play in the background here. Lower that volume down. President Trump lays a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery to honor the 13 service members lost in 2021 because of the debacle of the Biden administration. And Kamala threw her hat right into the middle of that in case you and never should forget. I'll just zoom forward. That's how you honor fallen service members. 
Kamala tried to retort with this three years ago today outside of Kabul airport, Kabul airport, sorry, as ISIS terrorists killed 13 American service members and more than 100 innocent Afghans and wounded many more. On this solemn day, let us come together as one nation and remember your initial reaction, which isn't the reaction you're given now and nobody at the bottom of that, her tweet, let her forget it. There's nothing more to be said than that. The laugh was her first reaction to reports that Americans were trapped and possibly dead in Afghanistan three years ago. And this is who some want to be their commander in chief. Laughing at lost service members. Why'd you laugh when reporters first asked you to comment on their deaths? Why haven't you acknowledged and apologized for this fiasco? Why don't you honor their families directly? All very good questions. Harris says she had key role in Biden's Afghanistan withdrawal. The vice president confirmed she was the last person in the room before Biden made the decision. Laughing afterwards, not fessing up to it. You were the last person in the room. Two different ways of honoring fallen soldiers. One, we should never forget how it was handled because Kamala, when unscripted, is Kamala. Plain and simple, and that's what you saw there. But it gets worse. A lot of secrets coming out in the wash. Trump going off about the debate saying, you know what? Go ahead, leave the microphone open. But why should I do it? Why should I face up to nothing that has been but the largest set of lies in the worst administration that has ever existed? And I agree with him. Imagine if we actually heard the whole truth. Because Zuckerberg the most unexpected person in the world comes out. Now, there's a reason I believe he's doing this, and I'll get to that. Comes out and buries the Biden administration. House Judiciary, GOP here. Mark Zuckerberg just submitted three things in a letter I'm going to show you. Biden-Harris admins pressured Facebook to censor Americans. Facebook censors Americans. Facebook throttled the Hunter Biden laptop story in the letter that he wrote coming from Meta to the Honorable Jim Jordan Chairman. We'll go through the most important parts here. In 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including White House, repeatedly pressured our team for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire. Voting in the second Biden term or the Harris administration, call it what you will, will get you further censorship. This is how they control the debate. Rather than actually having an open conversation with we, the people, a discussion, a discourse, it's controls. This is what you will do, not what you should do. I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that they were not that we were not more outspoken on it. We're ready to push back if something like this happens again. Well, I guess that was until just a few weeks ago. So, Mark, before you issue these letters, and let's again check this date, August twenty sixth of twenty twenty four. He's going to eat his words here in a moment. Trump's already called them out on it. In a separate situation, the FBI warned us about potential Russian disinformation. Oh, we've heard about that. Biden family, Burisma, so on and so forth. We sent the story to fact checkers for review and temporarily demoted it so that you, we the people, couldn't hear from us who do this for a living to bring you the news in a referenced research fashion. But no, they throttle everything. They want to make sure they preview it first. From Mark Zuckerberg. So why is he doing this now? Why is he talking about claims that create an individual government? Anything that you said wrong about COVID was throttled. He gives the letters here. He gives the reference points and he says it's Facebook, YouTube, Amazon, all change your content moderation policies. We've known that. We've reported to you. I can't believe this is just coming out now because we were under pressure from the Biden administration and others to do so. Scary and others. This is stemming from the continued criticism of our approach from the Biden administration. They had to throttle everything time and time again. So why now is Mark admitting to this? Why is this unusual source, unexpected source coming out and burying the administration? Because he knows a new administration's coming in. And Trump called him out. Facebook, 
has just submitted that it wrongly censored the Trump attempted assassination photo and got caught. Do you think Trump's going to forget that? Do you think if he doesn't eat a little crow now or if he eats crow now that maybe Trump will forgive him and forget? Or do you think they should finally go after the censorship engines top to bottom? If we give you protection, you have to allow for free speech. It's not a difficult concept. We give them protection from what is published by authors on their platforms, the U.S. government does. They have no right to censor that content, and they do. Mark Zuckerberg knows that he even downstacked Trump's assassination attempt. So when he says he fixed it, you truly believe him? Or you believe he's just covering his hide? It appears a lot of people are covering their hide right now. A lot of people. Democrats urge investigation and X for political misinformation and censorship. You see, it will never stop. They're not going to stop. If the Harris administration gets in, you will see censorship unlike anything you have ever seen before. Because if Biden had trouble talking, Kamala prefers to be scripted. No interviews, no one-on-ones. Think about that. They'll control the message. By the way, sidebar, funniest headline I saw while researching yesterday. Tuesday's briefings, Republicans endorsed Kamala Harris. I had to jump in and see what they were talking about. So I went down. More than 200 former Republican staffers endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Who did those staffers work for? George W. Bush, Mitt Romney, and John McCain. I think it may be quite a stretch to call them Republicans. Now, wouldn't it always research? Watch how they maneuver. Watch how they manipulate. Watch how they cover up. And when you start to see a cover-up, question it. No greater case than crooks. Well, not crooks exactly. His family. Do you hear what they just did? Now, I am not going to cast judgment yet because what they did involves the FBI. They lawyered up. Thomas Matthew Crook's dad hires big-time attorneys as FBI probe heats up. Reason I am going to reserve judgment is they are dealing with the FBI. I can't, out of one side of my mouth, say that we have to be very cautious with the FBI. All their errors, their blunders, their cover-ups, steering as we just reported the Russian disinformation campaign, making sure what was promoted and what wasn't promoted. So, of course, there's a lack of trust in all the letter agencies. So I'm going to reserve judgment here in the fact that the FBI was investigating something involving me. I guarantee you, I would do the same. So I will reserve judgment no matter what my personal opinion will be right now. Because a lot will take that story and they'll run with it. What is he covering? And there's reasons to have that suspicion. Trump shooter Thomas Matthew Crook's parents retain high-power lawyers as feds probe what they knew and when. This Sunday, New York Post. The family as Thomas Matthew Crooks has retained the top law firm as the FBI continues its investigation into last month's deadly rally shooting in which former President Donald Trump was nearly assassinated. The Crooks family is being represented by Quinn Logg, a top Pittsburgh law firm, according to Daily Mail. Quinn Logg, headed up by veteran lawyers John Quinn and Matthew Logg, specialize in personal injury, legal malpractice, employment litigation cases, according to the website. The firm also does criminal defense. So you have to draw your own conclusions there. Of course you do. But why the concern? There's been no forward movement. The lack of forward movement in determining Crook's motive was prompted some lawmakers to accuse the FBI and Secret Service of slow rolling the investigation and maybe maybe they're looking for another. Maybe they're looking for someone to blame outside Thomas Matthew Crooks. Is it possible? A lot of rumors swirling around the internet. And why would the question around the family still exist? If you've been listening to my report, you'll remember exactly why. We're a month in. And they're no further along of establishing a motive. Trump shooter's body's gone. 
after Congressman uncovers disturbing fact about the investigation. That's right. Cremated. You remember when we talked about that. Trump shooter had multiple encrypted accounts overseas. No answers yet. How'd the body get incinerated? How'd the body get incinerated? How do we know nothing about the encrypted accounts? How have they not been able to access it? How and is this true? A very early on report. I will not let it go. Eli Crane reveals Trump shooter's home was reportedly scrubbed clean like a medical lab. No silverware or trash was found in the home. Thomas Matthew Crooks was allowed to walk around freely, right up onto a rooftop, clear as day. No counter surveillance team put into that rally that day. Home clean, no garbage, encrypted accounts, incinerated body. And you wonder why there's questions. I don't believe those questions are gonna end. So what does the family do? They lawyer up. No update from the FBI since July 15th of 2024. August 27th at time of this recording. That's scary, my friends. Trump was shot in the head. A man died. Two others were injured. Shot. And we sit here and we wait. And we want more of this? People want more of this? But you see, it's all duck and cover. It's all shrouded. It's all secrecy. It's all lies. It's all changes. It's all scripts. It's whatever they want it to be for the moment. Because the moment they step out of line, the moment they veer off that path they have designated as proper, you get sound bites like this. Reporter asked her about what the state of race relations will be. Kamala Harris was asked about race relations if Trump wins. When you come off of script, here is the disaster you get. I think it's really important that we as Americans always embrace our history, the parts that we're proud of and the parts that we're not proud of but that we can't forget. And we should all agree that we should teach history, we should learn history, if we're to ever have an accurate idea of where we want to go and where we don't want to go in the future. And that means also acknowledging the importance of diversity. It means acknowledging the importance of, of, of the fact that everyone should have equal opportunity to compete and, and equity. And then, of course, inclusion, that, you know, hey, let's look around the room and see Who's not here? And did we leave the door open? Uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, equality. Same talking points. Same sound bites. Not able to even answer the simplest of questions. And I have a lot of questions. Trump goes off, rightfully so, about a debate. Family of crooks, lawyers up, FBI gives us no details, no updates. Facebook comes out and admits to cover his own behind, in my opinion, what the Biden-Harris administration is doing. And we're only hearing a fraction of what's actually being done behind the scenes. They are downstacking to always make it appear as if the opposition is a minor, minuscule opinion and subset of people. In actuality, it's a megalith. Because if people understood that 80% or 70% of Americans believed a certain way, and then either a vote or a headline goes in the opposite direction, it would appear a lot more suspect if you knew that 70% of the people believed one way, but if you make it appear by downstacking everything, that only 10% of the people believe that way, and they're crazy conspiracy theorists, it's a little bit easier to sweep it under the rug, isn't it? Well, we will not allow you to ever be swept under the rug by anyone. We keep it as black and white as we can here, show you the evidence, show you the facts, show you the articles so you can always keep your eyes wide open. 
I love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.